Hello everyone, my name is Seema Pankumini. Welcome back to CMA Modules. In this video lecture, we will be recording journals and lectures 1.5. We have already recorded one video lecture related to this chapter wherein we have completed credit purchase, how to record credit sales. Now in this video lecture, we will be recording Bills Receivable Journal. The Bills Receivable Journal is a book of original entry which is meant for recording bills of exchange received from customer to whom goods have been sold on credit. This journal records the details like details of customer, name of drawer, name of acceptor, date of receipt of bill, date of drawing uh, of bill, date of acceptance of bill, tenure of bill, date of maturity, ledger folio and amount of bill. So we have Bills Receivable Journal. Bills Receivable journal is nothing but a book of original entry. Bills receivable journal is nothing but a book of original entry which is meant for recording bills of exchange. Book of original entry which is meant for recording bills of exchange received from customer to whom goods have been sold on credit. Okay, so we have bills receivable journal and it is nothing but a book of original entry which is meant for recording bills of exchange. Which is meant for what? Which is meant for recording bills of exchange. Okay, received from customers to whom goods have been sold on credit. So bills of exchange is nothing but that I have made a sale on credit and this credit sales which I have made okay that is recorded with the help of a document and that document is known as bills of exchange. So bills of exchange is suppose I'm a shopkeeper so that much amount is receivable for me. So bills receivable journal is a book of original entry which is meant for recording bills of exchange. Uh, received from customer to whom goods have been sold on credit. This journal records the details like details of customer, name of drawer, name of acceptor, date of receipt of the bill, date of drawings, date of uh, acceptance, tenure of the bill, date of maturity, ledger folio and the amount of bill. So we have bills receivable journal, source document for entry in purchase journal. All entries in this book are made from bills of exchange received from the customer. So bills receivable journal means whatever bills receivable you have may take uh, this bills receivable journal will record, will make a record of all the bills which are receivable. Then we have posting from bills receivable journal to ledger. How do you post? So bills receivable journal being a book of original entry transactions entered here are thereafter required to be posted to respective ledger accounts in the ledger. Total of bills of, uh, bills of exchanges received during a period is posted to bills receivable account in general ledger while the individual transactions posted in personal ledger accounts of respective customers. So we, we require bills receivable document and that uh, with the help of that document what will happen is we post uh, details under bills receivable journal. Then we have bills payable journal. Bills payable journal is a book of original entry which is meant for recording bills of exchange issued to the supplier from whom goods have been purchased on credit. This journal records details like details of supplier, name of drawer, name of acceptor, date of issue of bill, date of drawing of bill, date of acceptance of bill, tenure of the bill, date of maturity. So we have bills payable journal. Bills payable journal is nothing but it will record the details of all the bills which are payable. I am supposed to pay. Okay, bills which are payable. So date of issue, date of maturity, date of acceptance, tenure of bill, ledger folio, amount of the bill. All these details will be recorded here. Source document for entry in purchase journal. All entries in this book are made from the bills of exchange issued to the suppliers. Posting from bill payable journal to ledger. The bill payable journal being a book of original entry, transactions entered here are thereafter required to be posted to respective ledger accounts in the ledger. So how, how you'll post in your ledger account? Okay, so you'll require, you'll, you'll post from bills payable to ledger, bills payable journal to ledger and you'll use bills payable document. General ledger or journal proper. General uh, journal proper is a book of original entry in which those transactions for which no special journal is maintained are recorded. In other words, transactions like credit purchases, credit sales, purchase return, sales return, etc are recorded in this book of primary entry. This book of original entry is also known as journal proper. The following transactions are recorded in this book of original entry. So we have purchase of uh, non-current assets on credit, sales of non-current assets on credit. We have entries passed to rectify errors made in books of accounts. We have entries passed to adjust ledger balances. So we have general journal or journal proper. So if you have 
certain specific entry and that specific entry is not finding place in any of the ledgers discussed above say per credit purchases credit sales uh, purchase return sales return any any of the uh, 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 journals we, which we discussed there is no m we cannot make entry of that special transaction in any of the journals mentioned above then we can post that specific entry in journal proper or general journal so purchase of non current asset on credit for sale of non current asset on credit entries passed to rectify errors made in books of accounts entries passed to adjust ledger balances entries passed to open accounts entries passed when business uh, ceases operations so all these cases are uh, covered under journal proper types of entries recorded in the books of in the journal proper so we have opening entries these entries are passed for bringing the balances of certain accounts in the books of current accounting period the different accounts whose balances are brought forward are the assets liabilities and equity accounts appearing in the balance sheet of preceding accounting period transfer entries in accounting it is sometimes necessary to transfer an amount of amount or balance of one account to some other account so we have opening entries these entries are passed for bringing balances of certain accounts in the books of current accounting period so these balances do not belong to okay uh, they are closing balance of any other period we bring to our current period the different accounts whose balances are brought forward are assets liabilities equity accounts appearing in the balance sheet of preceding accounting period transfer entries in accounting it is sometimes necessary to transfer an amount or balance of one account to some other account the journal entries uh, through which the amount of an account are transferred to another account are referred to as transfer entries so we have transfer entries it is transferred from one account to another account okay so we have transfer entries where it is transferred from one account to another account the balance of one account to some other account the journal entries through which the amount of one account are transferred to another account are referred to as transfer entries such entries are used when a wrong booking has been made in respect of any account or to allocate an expense or revenue from one account to another then we have closing entries all expenses and gains or income related nominal accounts must be closed at the end of the year so we have closing entries the entries which are passed at the end of accounting period for closing the nominal accounts by transferring them to profit determining accounts like trading profit trading account profit and loss account consignment account joint venture accounts so they are closing entries so suppose i have I'll, I'll, let's let's take an example i have printing and stationery account or else i have uh, uh, a salary account okay i have salary account so here i had uh, payable or i had any any uh, expenses which i have cleared okay opening balance i have closing balance i have payments payments done during the period so all those transactions were affected in the salary account now what i did at the year end i closed that account and final balance was transferred to profit and loss account okay the, to the trial balance and from trial balance to profit and loss account say say asset or say mr a's account mr a is for example my debtor so i added i subtracted i did everything and i finally i had a closing balance closing balance transferred to trial balance and from trial balance it it got transferred to my uh, balance sheet adjustment entries there were some uh, adjustments needs to be done these entries are passed at the say, at the time of finalization of accounts for honoring the different uh, different generally accepted accounting principles that is accounting concepts and accounting conventions so they are nothing but adjustment entries you need to pass adjustment entries without that you cannot close your books of accounts now i have made uh, 31st march okay and the payment or related to march will be done in the month of april so i have receivables i have payables okay so how to close my books of accounts for year end of a month end i'll do that by passing adjustment entries if i don't pass adjustment entries i'll not be able to close my books of accounts i'll not be able to close for that particular period rectification entries the amount which i was supposed to for journal entry which i was supposed to make was of 30000 what i did i made 33 uh, i made entry of 3 lakh i made a uh, wrong entry 
okay so i need to rectify this i was supposed to pass any entry i missed that out omission of entries posting i made different mr a instead of mr a i did mr a b okay so it can be anything this entries are passed for correcting different errors that, uh, that get committed while recording posting casting balancing etc in the books of accounts so that's rectification entries rules of journalizing the process of passing an entry in a journal is called journalizing the rule for journalizing is same as that of rules of debit and credit the debiting and crediting of the accounts are done on the basis of certain rules there are two alternative bases for the rules of debit and credit such as follows rules of debit and credit based on types of accounts and rules of debit and credit based on accounting equation so you have rules of journalizing so what what is rules of journalizing the process of passing an entry in journal is called journalizing process of pass passing entry in the journal is called journalizing the rule for journalizing is same as that of rules of debit and credit the debiting and credit of the accounts are done on the basis of certain rules and these they these rules have two alternative okay so there are two alternative bases for rules of debit and credit such as follows rules of debit and credit based on types of accounts and based on accounting equation so they have just introduced that process of journal is known as journalizing then um, they even they use the same process that is debit credit and they are based on two rules okay let us give a read to the rules rules of debit and credit based on types of accounts golden rule approach under double entry system every account can be classified into any of the following three types so they are personal account real account and nominal account personal account real account and nominal account for each of these types of accounts there are separate rules of debiting and crediting the transactions the rules of debit and credit under different types of accounts are as follows so we have three accounts nominal account personal account and real account personal account is sbi bank icici bank uh, any any schools any hospitals Uh, any name mr a mr b pankti any name so they are personal accounts so personal account has a rule debit the receiver credit the giver real account real account is related to assets and liabilities debit what comes in credit what goes out nominal account debit all expenses and losses credit all incomes and gains rules of debit and credit based on accounting equation so this was based on golden rule approach that is accounting types of accounts we have three accounts see module 1 is very very important 1.1 1.2 1.3 entire module 1 is very very important for objectives for small small questions 2 marks 3 marks 4 marks वैसा करके they ask you question from entire module 1 15 to 20 marks question ban jata hai if you see past papers they have asked you in in the form of mcqs they have asked you in the form of match the column they have asked you in the form of small small questions i can frame a long question prepare journal then post it to ledger then post it to uh, trial balance and then prepare uh, uh, final accounts i can do that or else up to trial balance or else only journalizing only uh, uh, posting to ledger so being theory please don't ignore it you can get many many questions from these these chapters small small chapters they can ask you direct question write a short note on accounting assumptions write a short note on accounting concepts going concern concept okay they can give you any any question very very important and in fact these chapters i find it very easy they are related to our plus 2 topics they are related to our graduation topics so these chapters are very very easy and scoring so three rules three account three three accounts nominal personal and real nominal personal and real then we have rules of debit and credit based on accounting equations accounting equation is the statement of equality between three basic elements of accounting namely assets liabilities and equity each and every financial transactions affects any one or more of these three basic elements however the total of all assets is always equal to total of liabilities and equity at any point in time the rules of debiting and crediting an account based on accounting equation has been summarized below so we have assets liabilities capital drawings expenses revenue so assets debit credit liabilities debit credit capital debit credit then you have drawings expenses and income so so when you are supposed to debit and when you are supposed to credit that rule is given here 
usually we we come to know by passing journal entries uh, mugging up is not required so if you have increase in your asset you are purchasing something suppose i already have machinery and i'm purchasing one more machinery so i'm adding back to my machinery so that's debit for me increasing i'm selling away credit credit what goes out liabilities suppose i'm paying away okay so i'm decreasing my liability debit increasing my liability credit capital debit credit decrease increase drawings debit credit increase decrease so so this asset liability capital drawings expenses and revenue again capital suppose i am paying away my part of the capital i am decreasing my capital i'll have to debit increasing my capital credit you are capital is your liability if you are increasing your liability increase credit drawings debit credit debit increasing increase in your drawings you have to debit decrease in your drawings you have to credit expenses debit all expenses and losses credit all incomes and gains right so if you are increasing your expenses you please debit if you are paying away your expenses you please uh, credit it revenue debit or uh, uh, suppose you are pay uh, you are getting in some income okay 1000 rupees as other income increase in your income you you got income credit all incomes and gains increase in income okay increase in income then you are paying away your amount okay you are paying away your amount so that's debit okay a quick read i hope you are comfortable till here in next lecture we'll start from steps in journalizing